Hello and welcome to the CompTIA Pen Test Plus Certification Exam Prep Course. I'm Michael Solomon and I'll be leading you through this course and throughout the next several videos we're going to cover everything that you're going to need to know to be successful on the CompTIA's brand new Pen Test Plus Certification Exam. Now I have the opportunity to work both in academia and in industry. I teach classes in cybersecurity and I also get to work with many different types of industry organizations to provide cybersecurity services. And one of the most exciting and fun times in providing cybersecurity services is doing penetration testing. Now, I assume if you're to this point, you've already done some penetration testing before and you have a little experience. So let's go through what it takes to be successful in the CompTIA Pen Test Plus certification exam. So first off, let's talk about what the exam is actually going to cover. It's going to certify that a successful candidate has the ability to do several things. First off, you need to be able to plan and scope an assessment. You don't just start testing. You want to start off with a defined plan and you want to run every penetration testing engagement as an actual project. It has a starting point, it has an ending point, and lots of very structured steps throughout the process. We're going to come back and talk a lot more about the importance of project management, but make sure that you pay attention to how important it is to really look at it as a project because we want to be able to do this over and over again. And that's where project management comes into play. We want the project to be repeatable and we also want to tweak it over and over again so we learn what we did well and what we didn't do so well. The things we did well, we want to do again. The things we didn't do so well, we want to do better next time. So you want to be able to plan the engagement and then scope it. In other words, know how much work you're going to do and also know when to stop. Because sometimes you just keep on testing and testing and you might get lots of data back, but it may not be good information. So first off, plan and scope our assessment. Next, we want to also understand legal and compliance requirements. Now this is twofold. It talks about, or the exam is going to ask you questions about your legal liabilities and exposure, but also the organization, your client's exposure. So as we work through, we're going to talk about the tester, that'll be you, and I'm going to refer to the client, and that is the organization for whom you're working. And the client can be a for-profit or not-for-profit, it can be an organization or a corporation, it doesn't really matter. The client will be the organization against which you're launching all these tests. So you want to understand the legal environment. There's one legal environment in the United States. There may be a totally separate legal environment in another country. And even within the states, it may change state to state. At the time of this recording, we just had California pass yet another privacy law, which actually almost raises things to the standard of the GDPR from the European Union. So things are changing all the time. It's up to you to stay current. With the, with the legal environment. Next, we want to also perform vulnerability scanning and penetration testing. Those are slightly different using appropriate tools and techniques. So this certification is not just about knowledge. In other words, you can't really just read a book and pass. You're going to actually have to roll up your sleeves and do some penetration testing. You need to use some tools and to know what tools to use. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking about your toolbox. What tools do I need to use? When do I use each tool? And what are some other tools I may want to acquire as I get deeper and deeper into penetration testing? The exam also talks about analyzing those results. It's pretty easy to run tools. You basically just type in the commands that we talk about during the course, but what do we do with those results? What does it mean? We're going to get pages and pages of results back from these tools. Some of it is information that's useful, some of it's not very useful. And it's important to be able to focus in on the important pieces and be able to just ignore the rest or just not worry about it too much. You don't want to focus on working through useless data. You want to focus your time on results that will impact the end game and the final report. In addition, you'll also be required to discuss how to produce a written report containing the proposed remediation techniques. Now the exam is very clear about this. A report is not simply saying these are the three 
uh, uh, vulnerabilities or 30 vulnerabilities that Nessus found, and we'll talk about what Nessus is, that's not a, a good report. That may be part of your report, but you want to set the stage, explain what you found, how you found it, and most importantly, recommend remediation steps. Finding a vulnerability is easy, but fixing it is harder and takes budget, it takes time and effort, and that's what you want to provide value for your client to be able to say, here's what I found and here's what you do about it. And in many cases, you'll be able to give them multiple options. And as you provide guidance on those options, you're providing value to the client. And lastly, communication is crucial throughout the process. Kind of a shame we put it at the very bottom of, of our list because it's so important. From the very beginning, you want to be able to effectively communicate not only the results, but also the process to management because you'll be communicating with many people that may or may not be on your penetration testing team and you want to be able to keep the lines of communication open and we'll talk a lot about how this is important and how we actually do it. Let's talk a little bit about the exam details. First off, the required exam, it is labeled as PT0-001. That's just how CompTIA identifies this specific exam. The information here is the information that is released uh, actually prior to them releasing their, their final uh, version. So this may change slightly, but at this particular time, it is a maximum of 80 questions. So first off, that sounds pretty easy, but don't let it fool you. It'll be both multiple choice and performance based. Now what that means is you can't just read a book and answer the questions. I've already mentioned that, but it's so crucial. You have to have experience because you'll be asked questions that will depend on your ability to remember and recall your experience of actually running these different tests. So we're going to have you run through a lot of the tests and use the different tools in these sessions. But it's important that you actually do the work and don't just watch me do it because that experience is going to be something that you'll draw on as you work through this exam. If you've taken other CompTIA exams, this is different. The performance-based questions are a new addition for this particular certification. All right, how long do you have? 165 minutes. Okay, that's a pretty good amount of time, but that's how much time you have to work through all of these 80 questions. Uh, and the recommended experience before you sit for this exam, you really should have about three to four years hands-on experience, either as a penetration tester, a vulnerability, vulnerability assessment professional, or vulnerability management. So you don't have to actually be doing all the pen tests, but you have to have an awareness of penetration testing, vulnerability, both determining and managing those vulnerabilities. It's really important that you not just simply you look at this as an entry-level certification. It isn't. You need to have some collateral experience to be able to succeed in this exam. And then lastly, passing score on a scale of 100 to 900 is 750. So that shows you what you're going to need to do. So you have 80 questions, 165 minutes, you have to get 750 out of 900. So now you know a little bit about what the exam entails at a high level. So let's jump right in and let's get into the exam's nitty-gritty details. This is going to be a lot of fun.